Howdy. Welcome to all of you, and thank you for coming out today to uh, yet another uh, exciting announcement uh, for West Texas A&M University and a tremendous uh, partnership with the Texas A&M University system and Texas A&M University. I want to connect a few dots as an introduction to where we are today and how we got here. The Morrell Act was signed into law by President Abraham Lincoln on July 2nd, 1862. The Battle of Malvern Hill in Virginia had ended the day before. In the midst of this national tragedy, Lincoln attended to the interests and needs of higher education. The Morrell Act established land-grant universities in the United States. And I want to just read briefly from the Act. The benefit of the Act is the endowment, support, and maintenance of at least one college where the leading object shall be without excluding other scientific and classical studies and including military tactics to teach such branches of learning as are related to agriculture and the mechanic arts in such manner as the legislatures of the states may respectively prescribe in order to promote the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in the several pursuits and professions of life. And here we are all these years later still about that business. Dot two, in 1876, Texas A&M University was established in College Station, Texas. Instruction began. In 1948, the Texas A&M University system was formed. Dot four, in 1990, West Texas State University joined that system, and in 1993, we became West Texas A&M University. In 2009, the College of Veterinary Medicine made a commitment to create four service centers at West Texas A&M University, Texas A&M University, Kingsville, Prairie View A&M University, and Tarleton University. And today, dot number five. Progress continues as our board and chancellor make a groundbreaking commitment to the people of the Texas Panhandle and to West Texas A&M University. And to borrow Dean Eleanor Green's favorite line, we continue to develop our heart and our energy that started on July 2nd, 1862, to serve every Texan every day. I'm especially pleased that we have a number of distinguished guests, and I'm not going to try to name all of them. There are too many of you who are far too distinguished, but I would like to recognize the mayor of Canyon, Texas, Gary Henders. Gary, if you'll wave a hand. I saw you. I know you're here. Oh, right. I would like to ask our student body president, we're very proud of him and the work of student government on the campus of West Texas A&M University, Chandler Huddleston, to come and offer an invocation. Chandler. Good morning. If you will, please uh, bow your heads and pray with me. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you today and, today and I thank you for the people here. I thank you for this university Lord, I ask for your blessing upon this great university, upon West Texas A&M University. And God, I ask for your blessing on the people here, the students, the staff, the faculty, and the donors that have made this event possible. And Lord, I ask finally for your continued favor, for your divine hand as we move forward. Lord, please continue to just guide our way and direct our path. And it is all this I ask in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Chandler. Chairman Charles Schwartz, uh, Chairman of the Board of Regents of the Texas A&M University System, is an attorney who graduated from the University of Texas Law School and Harvard Law School with an LLM. He was appointed to the Texas A&M University System 
Board of Regents by Governor Rick Perry in 2013 and elected to serve a two-year term as chairman of the board on May 8, 2017. Please, let's show a West Texas welcome to Chairman Charles Schwartz. Thank you, Dr. Winder. It's a great pleasure to be here again. Uh, I'm going to say one thing about the Morrill Act, because if I don't say it, I know that Sharp will. Uh, it's commonly uh, known as the, land, the act that created the land-grant institutions. Uh, these institutions were funded by a grant of land by the federal government in the several states. Uh, but because there's really no federal land in Texas, there was no land in Texas to fund Texas A&M University. So our land was originally 180,000 acres in Colorado, uh, which we promptly sold and spent the money. <laughs> um, this, this morning at 10 a.m., the Texas A&M University uh, Board of Regents, uh, which I am the chairman, uh, voted unanimously to approve a $22.8 million building for veterinary education, research, and workforce opportunities in the pan panhandle. It is a... <laughs> it is a part of almost $90 million in new commitments to state agriculture industry in, in Texas. Uh, this building will be constructed here on the West Texas A&M campus. Uh, in our role as a system that's part of the higher education system in the state of Texas, we have 79 structures that we have under construction right now for a budget of about $2.8 billion. Uh, we have 11 universities and seven state agencies. And if we're not the largest contractor in the state of Texas, uh, we're one of the largest. And we're proud to make commitments to education here in the Panhandle and to make commitments uh, for the people of the state of Texas. Uh, this announcement of the Veterinary Education Research and Outreach Center, uh, which is called by the acronym VERO, uh, will be constructed adjacent to West Texas A&M's new agricultural science complex. I don't know who did the acronym, but we really do good acronyms at A&M. We, we have RELIS, we have the BLEND team, we now have the VERO building. So, uh, that department should be commended. <laughs> uh, the new Texas A&M Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory, its acronym isn't quite as snappy, it's TVMDL, uh, uh, which is, is currently in the process of being relocated uh, from Amarillo to Canyon. Uh, these are just two projects that we think demonstrates our commitment to agriculture in the state of Texas. We want to create new learning opportunities here for students at the, for the vet school in College Station and for the students at this university. We're updating the facilities for scientists, uh, for the TV MDL, uh, one of our state agencies, and an agency that's, that's almost unique in the United States for the important work that it does. Uh, we believe as a system, as a set of universities, and as a set of agencies, that it's our mission to serve the people of the state of Texas, the students who attend our universities who we believe are getting a terrific education at a fair price, a price that we keep as low as possible, commensurate with a quality education. Uh, we have other speakers today, so I won't go on to tell you all the great things that we're doing, but I will conclude by saying that we, as the Board of Regents of the Texas A&M University System, are proud of our association, our affiliation 
West Texas A&M University, and we look forward to great things in the future. Thank you very much. Chancellor John Sharp is a great leader of the Texas A&M University system and is carrying its land-grant mission of education, research, and service to all Texans. Recently celebrating his fifth year anniversary, Chancellor Sharp has made a great mark on Texas A&M University and the Texas A&M University system with its 11 universities, seven state agencies, a law school, a health science center, and branch campuses in Galveston and Qatar. Chancellor Sharp is a man of tremendous ideas, and he is unafraid of working them. Please help me welcome Chancellor John Sharp. Howdy, the obligatory howdy here. It's wonderful to be here. This is a good day for West Texas A&M, a good day for Texas A&M, but it is a great day for the Panhandle and the High Plains of the state of Texas. And I'm very proud to be here to talk about uh, what the Board of Regents has, has just done unanimously. So thank you, Walter, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, as Chairman Swartz said, thanks to the Board of Regents, commitment to this region, uh, about 30 minutes ago, uh, we just voted to bring the number three veterinary school in the nation to the Panhandle, uh, which happens to be the number one large animal production center uh, in the United States. Number three and number one combining is good. And you couple that with West Texas A&M's new agriculture sciences complex, the new Texas A&M Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory, which will now be next door. You have the best ag school vet school complex in Texas outside of College Station and what we make no mistake, what we're producing here is something that does not exist in the United States of America. This is a whole new deal. With today's actions, the Texas A&M system and the state has committed almost $90 million to this project, to this region and the future of agriculture and animals and we couldn't have done it without the support of members of the legislature and I know uh, Mr. Doctor, uh, Dr. Smithy, Mr. Smithy is here, Representative Smithy. Thank you very much for all of your help. Where, where's Mr. Smithy? Stand up. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now let me give you a little history of this. And I think Eleanor would get, I would love to stand up here and say, boy, this was my idea. This idea started in 2009 with a lady named Eleanor Green, right when she became the vet dean at Texas A&M University. And so she goes to the coordinating board at that time in 2009, told Texas A&M University's veterinary school, and by the way, I wasn't here at the time, so I'm not taking credit for it, uh, told Texas A&M University vet school at the time, they want you to expand the vet school. So they went to the legislature in that legislative session and asked for the money to expand the vet school as the coordinating board wanted. Uh, if you remember, 2009 was not a great time to go to any public body and ask for money. It was right after the Great Recession, uh, and that didn't happen. In 2011, the second person I talked to was this veterinary dean who came up to me and said, we're having trouble getting money from the legislature. The coordinating board wants us to expand. Can you please go to the board and get us some money to expand our vet school, which we did. The, vet, the Board of Regents appropriated $125 million out of the Permian University Fund, and she then built a vet school, which is just completed not too long ago, that will allow Texas A&M University to take its vet student population from about 140, 150 at that time to 250 if they so choose to do it, and that is now operational. Now, what she then announced was that in five different schools within the system would have cooperative agreements uh, and the emphasis was going to be always on West Texas A&M University. And so what this is, is something that is gonna expose hundreds of vet students over the next few years to the large animal industry 
uh, in the High Plains in the panhandle of the state of Texas. Because this is not simply going to be a research lab. This is going to be where students from the number three vet school in the United States of America cycle through West Texas A&M and, yes, help with research, but they're also going to be assigned and do internships at, 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 at cactus feeders or wherever all up and down this part of the country. And hopefully uh, some of those kids will say, you know, I kind of like uh, the cut of this place and, and I'll move here. And so we'll, we'll, we're going to expose for the first time dozens and hundreds over the next few years of promising veterinary students to what happens in the number one ag production place in the United States of America. And make no mistake about it, there will come a time shortly when this ag school on this campus will be the number one ag school in the state of Texas outside of College Station, Texas. And this will be... And I, will, and I can guarantee you on behalf of the board that the resource is going to be there to do that. And then when you couple it with the Texas Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Laboratory, which the Center for Disease Control will tell you that it's the number one place that they go to to find the diseases that are going to get you. Because 85% of the diseases you get come from animals. And this is the first place that catches all of that. So that research is going to be there. We're having some conversations about some additional research. You think you're done with us. You ain't. We're coming back in two weeks to announce another part uh, of this through the generosity of a, of a great uh, Texas Panhandle member. Uh, and, and we're going to do something here uh, that has never been done, uh, but we're going to use the resources of that great vet school in, in Texas A&M and bring those resources to the panhandle of the state of Texas and solve uh, lots of problems for lots of agriculture. And there is going to be nobody that can compete with the kind of research and ag program that we produce here. One of the reasons this is happening <clears throat> is because of Walter Wendler. Walter, we, we, we had serious debates before Walter got here. You know, she'd have to argue with folks. Well, the argument ended when Walter got here. Walter said, I did it. Let's do it. And from that point on, everything started sailing. And so if you want to pat somebody on the head, pat Walt, well, I hate you to do that because his hair is so pretty. <laughs> I'd hate for you to mess it up. Plus, you might cut your hand. I I'm not sure it's real hair. But anyway, uh, God bless the panhandle and the high plains of the state of Texas. You ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you very much. Envy is a terrible thing. <laughs> it is what it is. Dean Eleanor Green holds the Carl B. King Deanship of the Texas A&M University College of Veterinary Medicine and biomedical sciences. She has been with Texas A&M for almost 10 years and has been instrumental in the development and the implementation and the reality of this simple expression, serving every Texan every day. That's the mission of the College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. Please help me welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Eleanor Green. What an extraordinary day for West Texas A&M University, for Texas A&M University System, for Texas A&M University, College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, the expansive livestock industries, the Texas Panhandle, and most importantly, the youth of the Texas Panhandle and High Plains. Thank you all for coming today. And President Windler and, and Chancellor Sharp said they didn't want to recognize everybody, so I will. Will everybody who's important please raise their hands? <laughs> it's everyone, of course. Thank you again. So together, let us first thank the Texas A&M University System Regents and Chairman Schwartz for their exciting announcement today approving this $22.8 million building for veterinary education research outreach and workforce opportunities in the Texas Panhandle. No regents are more supportive of their system members than they are. 
This action not only accentuates their confidence in this initiative, but also their understanding of the importance of vital connections, such as with College Station and the Panhandle. This new building is definitely gonna expand the capabilities, the impact, and the reputation of one of the largest and most highly ranked veterinary schools in the world as we serve this region even better. We also acknowledge our dynamic chancellor of the Texas A&M University system, Chancellor John Sharp. I've yet to see anything get in the way of Chancellor Sharp and a good idea for the state of Texas, the Texas A&M University system, and Texas A&M University. Thank you, Chancellor Sharp, not only for your vision, your receptivity to out-of-the-box thinking, and your seemingly limitless energy and passion. We appreciate you more than you can know. Thank you. Thank you, President. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, President Windler. It's been a pleasure to work with you on this initiative. You're a breath of fresh air for WT and the Texas Panhandle and High Plains region. And this unique partnership between Texas A&M University and WT uh, are just going to be amazing because of your support. One must have confidence and trust in partners, as you all know, and we certainly have both in you and your entire team out here. Thank you, President Windler. <laughs> President Michael Young uh, regrets that he can't be here today uh, because this initiative wouldn't be possible without his support either. And in his absence, I'm gonna share just a brief phrase. He says, this arrangement is a perfect model of how, through collaboration with the system's regional universities and state agencies, we can expand our reach and impact the lives of Texans. So thank you, uh, President Young, and I, I wish he could be here with you. There's so many more to thank, and I, I'm just gonna have to thank a few. So first of all, thanks to each and every one, and many of you are here today, who met with the group from Texas A&M, College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, when we came to the Texas Panhandle in 2009, to start the first of many conversations to follow about how we could work together to advance food, animal, and rural veterinary medicine, to support and reinforce the livestock industries that contribute so much to the Texas economy while feeding our world, and especially to support the young people in achieving their dreams of an education leading to careers in veterinary medicine. Boy, without you, we wouldn't be here. I also want to thank all the veterinarians and start out with those like Steve Lewis, who happens to be one of our outstanding alumni. Uh, Dr. Lewis has dedicated his life to beef cattle health, especially cattle on feed, and he believed in what we were trying to accomplish since that very first meeting in the administration building right next to us in 2009. Thank you so much. And passionate people like Dr. Greg Veneklausen, who, who will tell you, he says he calls himself a black and white person, and he will tell you how he thinks. If you want to know, just ask him, and he will share it. And he's been a supporter as well, and I believe he's very wise in that. And thanks to other veterinarians, like. Dr. Dan Posey and Dr. D. Griffin, who are here, who believe so much that they pulled up stakes where they were working to come out here and be a part of it and to lead this effort with boots on the ground out here. Thank you, Dr. Posey and Dr. Griffin. We couldn't do it without you. <clears throat> And livestock leaders like Dr. Like, like Dr. Johnny Trotter, he is an honorary uh, PhD. Johnny Trotter, who's my friend and was one of my first sounding boards. Thank you, Johnny. And also Ross Wilson and other livestock industry leaders who fundamentally understand the substantial impact now and into the future of educating veterinarians to serve the livestock industries, of performing research that ensures healthy animals, healthy people, a healthy environment, a safe food supply, and prosperous livestock industries, of providing an educated, well-trained workforce and all to sustain and advance the multi-billion dollar livestock industries as well as this community in the Panhandle. So thanks to all of them. And I'd be remiss not to mention my dear friend, Dr. Dean Hawkins, whom we lost last week. You must know that he was a driving force and was proud to have been a significant contributor. As Dean once said about this initiative, sometimes you just have to cowboy up. And then he went on to say, everybody needs an overeducated Texas panhandle redneck with a hole in his head in their life. <laughs> That's so Dean. 
And that's the kind of wisdom that's led to today's announcement. And we wouldn't be here today without Dean Hawkins. I wish you were here with us today, although I'm confident he's watching from above. So thank you, dear friend. It always takes a village. I can't go on without thanking all the faculty, staff, and students, both at the Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences and at West Texas A&M for what they've done to launch this program, and more importantly, what they will do to ensure the success of this unique Vero building. We all know what it means now, so we'll just say Vero. And once it's been completed, the work has just begun. So in President Windler's words, this is going to be a super highway between Canyon and College Station. But what does that mean? What does it mean for there to be a super highway between Canyon and College Station? Well, you've heard the figure of about $90 million that's currently being invested at WT to support veterinary medicine, agriculture, and rural Texas. But I would expand on that figure to include the hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars invested over the years to create and sustain one of the largest and best veterinary colleges in the world. This includes the recently completed $120 million veterinary and biomedical education complex that has the capability for a direct connection between College Station and the Panhandle for students, faculty, researchers, educators, and others, and gives us the capacity to educate as many veterinarians as Texas needs now and into the future. This also includes our Texas A&M Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital for training veterinary students and serving Texas and their veterinarians with its unique features like a state-of-the-art diagnostic imaging and cancer treatment center. And the research facilities house researchers exploring significant problems in animal and human health and finding and sharing solutions in the Texas Panhandle throughout Texas, the nation, and the world. Yes, we are linking campuses and the regions and pooling capabilities, making available to the Texas Panhandle the resources of Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine, including the talents of approximately 300 faculty, and making available to College Station the strengths in agriculture of West Texas A&M University, along with the epicenter of the livestock industry. How amazing is that? Yes, indeed, it's a superhighway. So what will it do also for students? Veterinary students in all four years of their curriculum will have exceptional opportunities to gain hands-on experience in rural and livestock veterinary medicine. The educational experiences will be led by Texas A&M veterinary faculty who live in the panhandle and work at West Texas A&M University. These hands-on opportunities will be available to all of the veterinary students, some seeking concentrated livestock experiences and some just wanting to learn more about livestock agriculture before they choose their career path. This new generation of veterinarians not only will serve food animal agriculture production and rural communities in the region, but also will meet the future needs in veterinary diagnostic laboratories, food safety, regulatory agencies, and veterinary pharmaceutical research. So, the Vero building is gonna house researchers on site who will form research teams between campuses and beyond as needed to address panhandle specific issues and those with broad impact on the livestock industries. So in summary, these shared resources will create and support for many years to come the best food animal veterinary education and research program in the nation and the world. We can all be proud of that. The combined investment in shared expertise at West Texas A&M University, Texas A&M University, and the Texas Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Lab, along with partnering with local veterinarians through externships and internships, will contribute to excellence in veterinary medicine. In closing, this is one of the most exciting days for me as Dean of the Texas A&M University College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. We're gonna build on extraordinary uh, food, animal, and rural veterinary programs in the Texas Panhandle. This is a dream come true to expand the college strategically across Texas to serve every Texan every day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dean Green. Mr. Ross Wilson is the president and CEO of Texas Cattle Feeders Association. 
His visionary leadership has expanded the membership and services of the association and improved the fed cattle industry and agriculture in general in the state of Texas. He was awarded the Gerald W. Thomas Outstanding Agriculturalist Award from Texas Tech University and the Texas A&M AgriLife Distinguished Texan in Agriculture Award in 2011. I have come to admire Ross greatly for his commitment to what's best for West Texas A&M University. Please help me welcome Ross Wilson. This is, as been noted, a very, very exciting day. I want to give you the perspective of the livestock industry and the panhandle as to the partnership from this wonderful complex that is already under construction, the agricultural complex that many of you have had a part of. I hope all of you have seen. If you have not, uh, you need to drive just down Russell Long Boulevard and take a look at it. And the soon to be under construction TVMDL and Vero building. I appreciate acronyms with, uh, with vowels. But first, let me say, start by thanking some visionary leaders in this room that have already been recognized and have been on the platform. This would not have happened without the leadership and support of the Board of Regents. Chairman Schultz, thank you very much. Chancellor Sharp, as has been mentioned numerous times, uh, don't get in, don't get between a good idea and John if he's uh, supportive of it because it will happen. And thank you for your leadership. Dr. Green, can't say enough about what you've done at College Station with the creation of the new vet school and what you're doing in making this happen, the Vero opportunity happen in the Panhandle. And last but certainly not least, Dr. Windler, um, <clears throat> those of you that work with Walter, on a daily or weekly basis. Know that you can talk with him nearly at any time of the day or night. And that starts about 4 a.m. in the morning sometimes, if, if you really need him. I don't know if he's trying to keep up with John or what that situation is, but I appreciate uh, the passion and commitment that Dr. Winder has brought to WT in so many different ways. So the announcement, the construction, the progress on this complex is of dramatic importance and significance to the livestock production industry, not only in the Texas Panhandle, but in this region and really for the entire country. And in some ways, consumers around the nation and around the world, because the livestock products and the dairy products that are produced and processed in this area serve not only the nation's consumers, but serve the world's consumers. The three-state area of Oklahoma and New Mexico and really within a 150 to 200 mile radius of Amarillo, Texas, produces 28% of the nation's fed beef supply. Some six million head a year are produced and marketed by people like Johnny Trotter and other members taken care of by Dr. Lewis. Uh, it's also a growing, dramatically growing area in dairy production. Ranks number five, just this region ranks number five in dairy production nationally and the growth curve that they are experiencing will take them maybe even to number one at some point in time. This industry generates probably over 20 billion in economic activity. Our industry alone employs over 25,000 people. That will continue to grow and expand as we're served by the ag complex, the faculty, and the students. That's the most important part of this equation are the graduates, not only with animal science degrees from West Texas A&M, but veterinarians that will graduate from College Station WT Partnership to serve food animal agriculture in this part of the, of the region. As Dr. Green noted, it won't be just our livestock producers that benefit. There are roles for these veterinary uh, student graduates in diagnostic labs, in pharmaceutical research, in food safety and other government agency jobs. So that influence and impact will not only be felt in this region, but in all regions uh, around the country. So I just wanna conclude by reiterating how dramatic of a day this is 
for livestock producers in this part of the world um, with this partnership that has put to, been put together. I do want to close, though, as Dr. Green did, in recognizing Dean Hawkins, uh, a friend to so many people in this room, a visionary leader, but such a humble man that would do anything to accomplish a goal. So thank you, Dean. Thanks. Ross, thank you very much for your leadership. Dr. Steve Lewis is the owner of the Hereford Veterinarian Clinic since 1982. He's a two-time graduate of Texas A&M with a Bachelor of Science in Veterinary Science and a DVM. He also received a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science from West Texas A&M University. He is a member of the Ag Development Association and a white Buffalo member in the Alumni Association. He and his wife, Sally, have made a, pledged a significant gift toward the new agricultural sciences complex. He's a person with a commitment and voice of experience that is nearly unequaled. Dr. Lewis, please share a few thoughts with us. Thank you very much. I'm uh, one of the last dots, I think, to continue with Dr. Wendler's uh, original introduction. And I hope for many more dots to follow, <clears throat> as this is kind of what we're talking about is, is my profession today. I first met Dr. Green during the shareholders meeting back in 2009. We were uh, representing Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine the West Texas A&M University, leaders and organizations of the beef, dairy, swine industries, and AgriLife Extension. Over these last 10 years in discussion of the need of food animal veterinarians in this livestock capital of the world, and the use of this tremendous classroom of livestock in this area, and in the training of veterinarians through organized externships and internships. This veterinary education research and outreach center announced today addresses our years of discussed needs and is much more forward planning than this board would ever have conceived. These facilities, the WTA and M Ag Complex, the Texas Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Lab, and today's new veterinary education research outreach will house the experts that can address the increasingly complex needs of agriculture by educating the future generations of animal scientists, veterinary students, researchers, practicing veterinarians, and the agriculture industry workforce. Thank you, and I'm very glad to be a part and a, a graduate of West Texas A&M and Texas A&M. Thank you. We're almost ready for lunch. And I apologize to people who have been standing a long time. We appreciate it. I am humbled uh, by the opportunities that are present uh, at this university uh, in the city of Canyon, connected to the city of Amarillo, and part of the great Texas panhandle, and the spirit of the people, the aspirations that they have. It is a, uh, it's a remarkable place to be. And it just, I just cannot tell you what joy it brings me personally to participate in this, sometimes as an observer, Sometimes I'm intimidated by the energy and commitment of the many people that make things work here, but I am in awe of it all the time. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, lunch is available in the hallways uh, on both sides of the, um, of the room through both these doors. We appreciate you all very much. It's a great day for West Texas A&M University, Texas A&M University, and the, and the Texas A&M University system. Thank you.